Uh, so let me just kind of jump off and, and welcome everybody to our, um, to our 8.30 session this morning. Uh, thank you all for coming. Um, as we've been mentioning at all these sessions, if you have any, any questions or comments, please leave them in the, in the chat function, and we'll try and get those to our speaker uh, towards the end of their presentation, depending on, uh, on how much time we have left. We're trying to get everybody out um, you know, by five minutes before the hour or half hour. Um, and again, I want to make sure that, that I thank our sponsors that make this all possible for us. Um, Daytona International Speedway, Giabi Consulting and Management, Charter Spectrum, Florida Power and Light, Foundation Risk Partners, and AT&T. Um, and with that, I guess even I don't think that Representative Federhoff uh, is online yet. But Jim, do you want to do a quick maybe introduction of her so that when she gets here, we can just jump right into it? Yes. Uh, yes. OK, just Elizabeth Federhoff. She is district house member for 26 and was elected in 2018 and reelected this past uh, election 2020. And she is also retired military, served with Florida uh, National Guard, also serves on committees uh, like early learning and elementary education subcommittee where she is vice chair. She is also on the criminal justice and public safety subcommittee, insurance and banking, judiciary, pre-K-12 appropriations subcommittee, as well as rules committee. So, and she also might add that she previously worked, if y'all remember, was on staff for Senator Dorothy Huckel for a number of years. So uh, she's she's no stranger to uh, Tallahassee though. Good morning. Oh, there she is. Great, I think we see uh, Representative Federhoff. Um, we've heard, Jim gave a, a glowing introduction for you, so, um, we are we're ready to roll. Welcome and thank you so much for joining us this morning. Sure. Thanks for having me. How are y'all doing this morning? We're we are hanging in there in the, the virtual Volusia Days environment. We'd rather be up there, you know, obviously uh, face to face and, and seeing you guys and, and being able to do these conversations like we've always done. But uh, we're doing the best with what we have, just like everybody's been doing for the past year, right? Completely understand. It's a little crazy, but we are we are doing the best we can. So I appreciate you all giving me the opportunity to chat with you this morning. Did you have anything um, just in general that you wanted to share with the group or did you want us to get into questions? How would you prefer that that we just uh, just go with what you're uh, what you're going to do? So ask questions, right. whatever you all need to do this morning. Sounds good. So, I mean, the first question that, that we had is to, uh, if you could please share your thoughts on COVID-19 liability protection bills. Sure. I mean, obviously we need to do something to, um, to ensure that our businesses are covered. Um, we know there isn't that much going on yet, but there will be. I think um, the lawyers are just trying to figure out where to get in best um, to uh, make that happen as profitable as possible for them. And so we're trying to preempt that as much as possible here at the state level. So um, looks like that bill is actually kind of moving through the process right now pretty well. So uh, there's hope that we will have that in place to prevent some of the uh, the bad actors out there. So that's what we're looking at right now. Fantastic. Um, next one on, on our list. Could you share your thoughts on the online sales tax legislation and unemployment fund? So the online sales tax, um, do you all know where that's at? Because I have not seen that one yet. I think it's made it through its first committee on the House side. So it's got one more committee to go through. So it was just heard on March 10th. So it's got to go through Commerce. So it's only got two committee references. So that's pretty good for that. Um, I'm not sure where it's at on the Senate side, but if it's moving that quick on our side, then we have a possibility of getting it passed this year. And Lynn, if I could again interject on that bill, though, I mean, just on online sales tax, uh, Elizabeth, we very much in support of that since 2007. But 
you've also heard that there is a major concern about the unemployment compensation fund. Mm -hmm. And we got to do something along those lines as well, because it's got about a three point five billion dollar shortfall there. They're sure. very much concerned about a huge, huge tax increase on employers as it relates to unemployment fund. So mm -hmm. what they're talking about as a strike all amendment from last Thursday's Finance and Tax Committee being mm -hmm. uh, uh, using that $1.1 billion, which the revenue is expected from that to apply that towards that revenue short fund and un unemployment compensation fund. Business community very much still in support of that last Thursday in FNT committee those and so and you probably got my text Friday night about that as well so mm -hmm. please yeah I mean stay with us on that though. Sure definitely and you know the way that I look at it is if we do the online sales tax and we're collecting a tax that's already being collected by other states so you know we're just doing what our due diligence to to handle a tax that's already out there so um, it actually looks like on the Senate side, it's already moved through. Let's see, it's already moved through. So, I mean, as far as I can tell, it looks pretty good. If it's only got one stop left on the House side, it should be uh, it should be good to go. As long as the governor's on board, we should be uh, we should be good. And that's the same bill that uh, Senator Gruters had uh, from last year, Senate Bill 50, though. Mm hmm. Yeah. So, so it looks good. What else you got? Um, let's see. Do you have any bills this session and where are they in the process? I do have some bills. Uh, so I'm actually, uh, as soon as I get off with you all this morning, I have to go present my uh, Department of Financial Services package uh, on behalf of uh, CFO Patronus. It's got a lot of good uh, legislation in there for firefighters and for our uh, consumers and all of that. So we're going to go present that at about 9.15 this morning. And so I've been prepping for that. Um, I have a Florida building code bill this year, which um, helps with some local issues as far as the locals uh, trying to do ordinances that um, may hamper us being able to have some economic development in our areas. So we're trying to work on that. Uh, animal cruelty and um, some of the stuff I'm working on is kind of uh, a little boring this year, you know, a lot of insurance related stuff that may be not interesting to a lot of people, but, you know, I feel like it's good consumer policy, keeps our citizens protected um, from some bad actors out there. So just kind of plugging away on that. Well, we've got some insurance guys in the group, so they might be interested in, in hearing <laughs> some of those things. Well, we, uh, we were able to get the um, credit for reinsurance bill through its last committee yesterday. So that'll be going to the floor hopefully next week. So, um, and I think it's uh, through the Senate later on this week. So that one's done. Um, so that should be a good one. We're staying in compliance with an agreement that we have with the UK and the EU to do uh, credits for reinsurance. So that one will be complete, so. Jim, did you have uh, any other questions for the representative you wanted to share with us? Uh, yes, if I may, I mean, one that we've asked several other of your uh, uh, representatives and such, and that is Elizabeth Qualified Target Industry, and it's mm -hmm. coming up for renewal, uh, refund renewal, and that's House Bill 6071 by LaMarca. And mm -hmm. that's something very important to Team Volusia and mm -hmm. other economic development agencies around the state, and as well as Enterprise Florida. We talked with Dane Eagle yesterday. So I want to say it's 60, I mean, 682, I believe it is on the Senate side, if I'm not mistaken. 982. Uh, it's 982. Yep. 982. I'm sorry. That's okay. And, uh, um, yeah. So obviously, I worked on this issue when I worked with UCL and in support of QTI, I know it goes to the right places that we need it to, so I'm good with that bill as soon as I see it. It doesn't look like it's been heard yet on the House side, so. Okay, 
Yeah, that should be coming up in the uh, tourism and infrastructure subcommittee. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, like mm -hmm. I said, we're very much interested in that that bill. I mean, just that we feel that it uh, would give that tool to local economic development agencies as well as helping out Enterprise Florida. And sure. and and again, another one that we've said before. I mean, and that being the uh, COVID-19 liability protection mm -hmm. that a number of our small businesses are very much in need about that though. Just they're doing what they can and Nancy and everybody, Janet from our office can comment, especially this past week as it relates to bike week, mm -hmm. went out of their way to make sure that they followed the rules for CDC guidelines, health department guidelines as mm -hmm. it relates to bike week. Yeah. And so uh, we and I think we hopefully had a successful bike week this past week. So that being said, uh, we very much would appreciate your support. Like I said, not only on the the business bills as it relates to COVID-19 liability protection, but also we like the, the health care bills and I think they're looking to merge those two bills as well. So again, it looks that's good something for that that's one. very I, much I think, needed. I think we're actually probably voting on House Bill 7 on the floor probably this week or early or sometime next week. So that one's already ready to go. So you should and, be good with the COVID liability. And then y'all were already taken up uh, 7005, right? I believe y'all passed that last week. Let me see. That was the lab, the health care liability protection. Hold on. Sorry, I'm trying to look these up as you're mentioning them. Uh, it's on uh, second reading calendar, so we'll take that one up um, today. Okay. Yep, we'll take that up today at four. Okay. Great. Thanks, Jim. Another one from the from the chat uh, session. Um, are you sponsoring any local funding appropriations bills, and what is the outlook for local project funding? So nine out of my ten projects so far have been heard in committee, so that's good. That means that they're actually in play. Um, and so let's see. We've got the uh, South Daytona Reed Canal stormwater um, flood protection was heard. Um, as well as the Volusia County Water Resiliency and Water Interconnect Project. So we've got two water projects going. Um, we also have uh, Emory Riddle. Um, there's a, uh, for their Center for Aerospace Resiliency, we were able to get some money for them uh, for manufacturing, uh, manufacturing um, for optical grade devices. So we were able to get that one in. Uh, let's see. Daytona State College has got something in for their nurses, which is a really good one because we know we're in short supply of nurses in our area. And um, there's a couple other things, but those are the main ones for our area that we're um, trying to get through the budget. So right. water projects are always a good one to bring home because obviously that helps with our economic development and making sure that people want to come visit us. So absolutely, yep. absolutely. Cheryl, I, I see you typing over there. If you want to just kind of jump on, if you have questions, um, we've got some time. I can do that. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks, thanks for joining us. Um, I was just wondering, as as you're walking through, um, you know, we were talking about some of these local projects, uh, what's the outlook from a budget standpoint of getting local projects through? Because it's, uh, yeah, we all know it's a tough budget year. So, you know, I was really grateful that a lot of the cities didn't come to me for money this year because I know that local projects are going to be very difficult. Our main focus is obviously going to be healthcare and education, as they always are, but in this case, that's our main, main focus. Um, so I don't know that a lot of these local projects are actually going to get funded. I think we're going to put pet projects to the side and just trying to make sure that we have a balanced budget and are able to fund the main things that we need to. 
Um, so, you know, while I say I've got nine out of 10 that have been heard and are in play for the budget, I'll be happy if I get a couple of them just because it's going to be one of those years. Um, I don't think that we're in as economic straits as was originally predicted, but I think we're going to be overly cautious just to make sure that we get things taken care of, which I, I'm fine with. I mean, I, you know, I love to make sure that our local projects are taken care of, but sometimes you got to take the hit to make sure the whole is, is in sh good shape. So um, we'll, we'll see what happens with some of these projects. Obviously, Flood protection, those those local water projects are really important just because, you know, that's that's how those areas get fixed and we need to make sure they get some of the that funding. But, you know, some of the other pet projects that I know people come forward with, you know, our arts and our, our local stuff like that, I, I love making sure they get funded, but the fact is they're just not a priority right now. And as sad as that is to say, we need to make sure that those main things are taken care of. So I think that's what we're going to be focused on. I mean, that, that that obviously makes a lot of sense. You guys have a tough job up there this year. Um, Fred, I saw you type in there for a second. Did you have a, a question for the representative? Uh, yes, uh, this is Fred Guzman. I'm the president and general manager of Daytona Beach Racing and Card Club and Orange City Racing and Card Club. Just want to bring up the seminal compact bill that we're hearing uh, that's going to be coming at the end of this week. Uh, just want to make sure that you're aware that the Seminole Compact can potentially threaten 47% of our business in both Daytona and Orange City. Uh, we, we don't have the compact yet. Uh, once we get it, we'll see what it is. But mm -hmm. in, pa in past iterations, uh, it took away designated banker games. Mm -hmm. It's uh, proven uh, to be a big part of our business. It's something we've been doing since 2015. Uh, we would like to continue doing that, and uh, sports wagering will come up as well uh, as part of the compact. And how that comes about, uh, we're very interested in, in actually being an operator and not an affiliate as uh, the way the current model, at least what was proposed in the past. So I'm, I'm sure there's going to be a lot more to come. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, like I said, first is uh, get our hands on the compact see what impacts it has on us and then go from there. Thank you. So what I would ask of you is, so I don't sit on any of the, the gaming committees. And so what I would ask of you is, you know, keep an eye on it. We'll keep an eye on it on our end, but please get back to our office with uh, any issues that you see uh, that might be in there and I'll see what I can do from here. Very good, thank you. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you. Um, from the group, were there any other, anybody else have any questions for uh, Representative Federoff? Um, if, if not, um, I'll give you back five extra minutes of your day. I'm sure you've got, you've got a I lot that, it. <laughs> that you could do up there for us. So thank you so much for all you do for, for all of us. And thank you for taking the time to, to meet with us this morning. Definitely. Thank you for the opportunity and please reach out to me anytime. Uh, Valerie and Frankie in my office are, uh, are here to help as well. And uh, we look forward to working with you all. So thank you so much and have a great day. Thanks, everyone.